Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's version of Homebrew Weekly. Nice to be here. And today we're actually gonna we're gonna brew up something. I got a parcel the other day <clears throat> from a fellow whose name is Marco. But Marco, thank you so much. He sent me a few things actually, and I've mentioned them before. Um, this time he sent me um, he sent me this, and uh, I'll bring it up to the camera so we can maybe avoid the reflections of the of the light, but uh, there's what it is. It's an apple cider kit by Mangrove Jacks. And you can probably zoom in or pause this if you want, or um, I'll show a picture of it on the screen if this one isn't clear enough. Um, you can read all that by pausing the video if you want. So now I have not really done one of these before, and I haven't read the instructions. Um, there's a, a, a very simple version of the instructions on the back here. Basically, you, you add the fruit concentrate, you put that in there. I think you add some sugar and water and leave it for, to ferment and put your yeast in, of course. Um, but I'm gonna break into this thing because I believe there's instructions inside and the yeast is in here too. So let's brew this. I've got some sanitizer. I've got my fermenter all cleaned and ready to go and get ready to be sanitized. And um, let's, let's make this cider. Okay, so I wasn't sure what to expect here, so I did it off camera, but by cutting the top of this off, what we're left with is, I can't, <laughs> I can't tip it too far, but there's juice in there, there's one half of it, there's like a little, a little divider in there, and on one half, this is the juice, the apple juice concentrate, and on the other side, there's these pouches with, well, there's the yeast, and I will hold that up to the camera so you can see what kind it is, okay? And so there's that. We have this thing, whatever it is. It's a little package of something. Let's see. Sweetener. Okay. I bet you that goes in later. But we'll see. Put that there. Come on. Uh, there's a, a clearing package. This is uh, it's probably apple cider flavoring. Oh, no, it's not clearing, fla clearing agent. It's flavoring. Okay, so that's there. And then we have some more detailed instructions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read these. I'm not gonna bore you with it. I'll read these over and then I'll come back and we'll, uh, I'll show you what we're gonna do, okay? Oh, and by the way, I have a small glass of homemade red wine to accompany this procedure. It's probably not the right type of glass, but I had it handy, so I just grabbed it. Cheers. Okay, well, this is pretty simple. Very simple, actually. So the first thing they tell me to do is sanitize everything. Now, they recommend their sanitizer, but I have star sand, so I just use that. So I've done that. Got my fermenter here and my stir stick thing. And the lid's over there with an airlock. So what they want me to do, this is, you could do this with, a child could do this. You pour the, mmm. Uh, Smells good. You pour the apple cider or the apple juice concentrate into there. Now, as an experienced home brewer, I am going to do something that they didn't say to do. They just say to squeeze out, squeeze out the rest of it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get some water into here. Okay. I've got a sanitized hose back here. I'm going to just get some hot water. I've also boiled, I've boiled a kettle full of water because they need that. I don't want to put the boiling water in here because it'll get too hot to handle it. We'll just rinse it out with a little bit of that. That's fine. Sorry for my back. Yeah, see? There we go. And then we just dump that in there. See, did you, I don't know if you saw the color of that, but that contained quite a bit of the stuff. So there, now we're done with that. We'll keep that around so we can know what we did. And then, uh, we'll just stir that a bit. Just to mix the water in. And then they want a kilogram of dextrose or table sugar. I chose dextrose because I have it. A kilogram, now I didn't weigh this because my scale, the battery's dead. So this is 700 grams right here in this line. And I just put it up to here. That's gonna be about a kilogram. I mean, it might be a little bit more, but that, 
that'll just give it an extra little kick. But yeah, I'm going to say that's about a kilogram, maybe a touch more. If I was to do this to it, it would probably be just right. So we'll throw that in there. Suppose if you wanted to, you could put more in, but I'm not going to do that because I'd rather follow the recipe the way they want me to. Okay, and then we're going to stir, and then we're going to add this boiling water, which I just boiled. They say th three liters or three quarts, so I just filled up the kettle. Looks like wort. You can sort of see it from the bottom there. I'll just pull it out, see? There. So, stirring it. I can't, I'm looking at my monitor. I think you can sort it. Let's slosh it around a bit. All right, I'm gonna say that that is dissolved. They want 23 liters of water. Now, I'm gonna use cold water. This has been sanitized, this, this hose. And I'm gonna use cold water. And I'm gonna hope. They want the temperature somewhere between, I think it says 16 and 28 Celsius. So on here, I've got Fahrenheit. We're gonna, we're gonna aim for around 75. Because I think 20 is about 72. 23 is about 46, 76, so 23, 76, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So while we're waiting for this, we... That wasn't a fruit fly, was it? Jeez, it's that time of year. Um, there, we're almost there. It feels like it's gonna be okay. If it's a little warm, it doesn't matter. This is 28 Celsius is, it's almost 90. It's, it's, in the high, it's in the 80s. So, it won't matter if it's, I might even put the hot, you know what? I'm gonna turn on some hot water now because it's getting a little cold. 23, boom, there we go. I didn't have time to reach back here and turn those off. It got up there real quick. Just a hair below 23. That's no problem. Give it a stir. All right, so I sanitized this thing here. It's got stains, stained from the wine that I use it for. And I'm not gonna sanitize this because I'm not gonna put this back. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll drink it, tell you what it tastes like. Also, there's a sweetening package here. I assume this is not fermentable, okay? So I'm not worried about adding it now. It's not gonna affect the gravity. Um, so I'll add it after. But they say to add the whole thing if you want it sweet. Add half of it if you want it semi-sweet, and don't add any of it if you want it dry. I'm gonna add half, because I'm not a big fan of sweet, but I also don't want it to be too dry, so that's what I'll, I'll put about half of it in. So let's get this out. And do it with the, with the hydrometer in there so that you know how much to put in. A little bit more, it's pretty clear. A little bit more. There we go, she's floating, so that's good. Now, I'm gonna take this reading. Let me put it down and we'll uh, just spin that just for the heck of it. Okay, I, this is almost impossible, but anyway, okay. It reads 1.044, and then when I spin it around a little bit, the alcohol, con the alcohol um, potential excuse me, potential reading says six. So it'll probably be about five and a half percent. They say 5.2. I put a little extra sugar in, so five and a half, five point two, somewhere in there. Perfect, okay. Um, I'll taste it so that we can get an idea what it tastes like before it goes through. It tastes like apple juice without the bitterness. You know how sometimes the apple juice you buy has a sort of a bitter Very nice. That's gonna be good. Okay, so this thing, this is the, uh, the other thing that comes with it is this, I mentioned it before, you do not add this yet. This is a flavoring package. Apple cider flavoring, yes. 
they call it the essence on the instructions, but I'm assuming that's the same because this is the sweetener that we're going to add half of. So hmm, I'll just I'll just sort of eyeball it. What does it look like? Uh, yeah, it's some sort of non-fermentable sweetener. So I don't know. I'll just hold on to this half and I'll let this half go in. How's that sound? Huh? Eh, that's about, I'd say, maybe a titch more. I don't mind things, yep, yeah, that, there, I'm gonna stop there. I'm not into, I don't want it to be too sweet because that just gives me a headache. So there, that goes in. And then the yeast, now they don't say whether to stir it or not, so, yep, they say stir. So, we'll put this in and stir. This is awesome. Now, we're gonna stir that, and we're gonna put our lid with our airlock, and that is it. The only thing left to do at the end, when this is fermented for six days, is uh, add this thing, and then wait 24 hours, and then bottle it. And when we bottle it, they want us to carbonate it. So I'm gonna be using, I, I could buy carbonation drops, and I might just do that. I do have some Grolsch, lip top bottles and you put three in each of those boom Bob's your uncle Get this thing on There's a little bit of star sand in there from when I sanitized I did a live brew once recently a live wine making and I snapped the lid on and I put the airlock I had it all set up and then I got a Skype message from a friend who was what in the chat room telling me well, they're asking about the yeast what do you add you add yeast to this I'm like um, yeah, you do add the yeast, actually. Of course you do. Yeah, so I, you know, I just said, well, we, you know, now that we've tried out the lid and we know that it fits, we'll add our yeast in. So I had problems with my microphone during that, so it was a little distracting. But anyway, there's that. And what I have got, I keep a little thing handy here if I can find it. It's for a medicine thing. And I just put a little, well, I'll put a little bit of sanitizer in that just to top this up. Ooh, bubbles. <sighs> bubbles! Trailer Park Boys. Ricky, calm down. <laughs> all right. For all you Trailer Park Boys fans, there we go. Snap that on. Did I say Bob's your uncle already? I think I did. So there's that. That's how that works. So thank you. Now, I don't have much else to say, except I have some people to thank. Some of these might be repeats because I, I, I want to overlap just in case I don't forget somebody. I want to think, now let me pronounce this name. Udo, no, Udardo. Udardo? Thank you. I, I'm, I don't want to mispronounce your name. Thank you very much. I'll put it on the bottom of the screen. Thank you so much for your contribution. Um, Roger L. Rodardo's last name starts with a D, by the way, but I didn't think there'd be too many names like that around. Roger L., thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Um, these might be repeats. John L., thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Kevin A., thank you. I think these are getting into repeats, but I don't care. Uh, thank you, sir. And Christopher S., and I think I didn't miss anybody. However, if I did, if you, don't, if you, sent, me a contrib if you sent me a gift, please, and I haven't mentioned your name, please email me at uh, craigtubemail at gmail.com. Somehow let me know if I forgot to mention your name. I try to keep track of this best I can, but you know, I got so much stuff going on in, in emails and whatnot that it's, sometimes I miss things. So let me know if I missed your name, okay? Don't be afraid, I don't wanna miss anybody. So that's that, whoops. Oh, nearly spilt my wine. Cheers. Mm. Good stuff. Okay, um, so like I said, in two weeks, We'll be bottling it, and I'll do some of that on camera. Why not? It's been a while since I bottled anything. Oh boy, that's going to be fun. I so hated bottling beer when I was bottling it. It was it was just one of the not the highlight of my day. I just don't like doing it. It's monotonous, repetitive, and you know it's no fun. Kegging is definitely a lifesaver. I can keg a beer in ten minutes, and you know what? If the beer is going to be drank within a week, which around here a lot of times it is because my son drinks it too, um, and I have neighbors that I share it with as well, so a keg can last, a keg can, can be gone in about a week. Um, 
I don't sanitize anything. I clean my keg thoroughly with hot water, and I clean the, or the, the siphoning apparatus with hot water, and I just put the beer in there. It's not going to sit for long enough to get infected, plus it's going to be in the fridge. So if you're one of those people who kegs a beer and it goes down pretty quick, not too worried about sanitizing for that. If you're going to leave your beer in there for two weeks, month, you know, something like that, definitely sanitize it. Definitely sanitize it. But when you're having a party, let's say Saturday night's coming around and you've got guests coming, you've got a keg there, and you know that keg's going to blow off on one, in one night or two nights, don't even bother sanitizing it. Just put the beer in there and there you go. So that's just me. All right, well, that's it for this week. That's really all I wanted to do. And I'm going to get myself another glass of wine and go sit down and watch some YouTube. Hope you guys had a great week and weekend. It's, it was Canada Day on Saturday here, and I know July 4th is coming up for you U.S. people. So great weekend. Hope you had lots of fun and were safe. And I'll see you real soon. I'll see you next Friday on my broadcast and on the next video, which is coming up very soon. All right, guys, thanks a lot for the support. Thanks for watching. We'll see ya. Cheers, 17.